A couple of years ago, I had the privilege of being an exchange student to Japan. After months of preparing for life in a foreign country, our local Rotary Club told us, teenagers bound for different destinations around the world, to each write a letter to ourselves that we would open and read again a year later upon returning home. In my letter, I iterated how impressed I was with the level of fluency with which future me could speak Japanese. And with this goal in mind, I embarked on my journey, confident that I would be able to overcome all challenges with hard work and perseverance. Finally, being in Japan was unlike anything I had known before. I was awestruck by my surroundings, the architecture, the people, the food, even the plants. Ancient and modern nature and technology were all jumbled together, yet they fit perfectly somehow. As amazing as it was, I struggled more than I ever thought I would. This new place was so exciting, almost perfect. But I was wrong. I didn't fit. I grew frustrated and confused as I realized how much of who I thought I was had been lost in translation. I had considered myself outgoing, talkative, independent, smart, and excessively polite. But in a foreign culture, these notions were contradicted daily. I found myself alone as my classmates talked between periods with friends they had grown up with. When people would talk with me, my capabilities rather limited the topic of conversation to favorite colors, hobbies, and number of siblings. Being independent soon proved to be unrealistic when I walked into the wrong changing room. And another time, almost dangerous, three hours into being lost when I couldn't even find where I lived. After a few months, I realized that I hardly spoke. I spent hours every day filling in notebook after notebook with vocab cards copied over and over. But I had hardly improved. After I finally decided to stop trying to be perfect. I hadn't come halfway around the world just to study by myself in my room. I focused on truly immersing myself. I opened up and took on a new perspective. When I couldn't understand someone, I no longer felt defeated. I learned to apologize and lead the conversation towards topics I was able to understand. Learning to accept my weaknesses and depend on others made a dramatic difference. By not letting my fear of failure hold me back anymore, my Japanese improved by leaps and bounds. As I stepped out of my comfort zone, I found that people wanted to talk with me. As my year was coming to a close, I was still making mistakes and still discovering ways I had unwittingly been insulting people the entire time. It was still embarrassing, but I used those times as opportunities to discuss cultural differences and to explain that I wasn't, in fact, trying to be rude. On my way home, I realized I had ironically become more independent. My abilities had improved to the point where I not only made my way through Tokyo hotels and airports easily, but I was even able to help out flustered tourists who couldn't read the Japanese signs and were lost. But moreover, I had a new confidence in myself. I feel so grateful to my Japanese counselor. When she saw that I was struggling, she told me, Muri shinai or don't push yourself too hard. At first, I thought she was wrong. No, I need to push myself harder. But looking back, I understand what she meant. Now, if I find myself running in circles, I step back and tell myself, and I am able to truly do my best. Thank you.